Welcome to Lizzie's Workshop. Today I'm going to be doing a canvas. It is a 12, uh, 11 by uh, 14 canvas and it's just from a package that I picked up at Michael's. So this is the first time that I've actually prepared my canvas with gesso. I didn't, don't know how it's going to turn out or what it's going to look like and I have some ideas but um, or I have kind of a plan at this point of what it's going to look like, but um, everything changes. I have no clue. <laughs> it's all still learning for me, I suppose you could say. So, so yeah, so um, I took the canvas, I covered it in gesso. Just, I've seen this often before, but I, I haven't seen the next steps, or maybe I just haven't been paying attention. So what I end up doing is, um, I didn't have any book I had, I had a family in mind for this canvas and it just wasn't, um, I couldn't find any book paper that made me happy and thought made me think of the family that I was making this canvas for. So I didn't bother with the book paper. Instead, I threw on some of Mr. Huey's color mist and the green that I'm putting on here is called Audrey. And then the blue I'm putting on is called Ocean. And I love how it modeled. Just love how it modeled. I'll show you. There you go. So I really love this image right here, the orientation that you're looking at it. Um, I was sort of tempted to leave it like this and use a uh, black marker to turn it into like a sci-fi kind of scene with with <laughs> on some other planet with all this you know a castle and aliens and all that kind of stuff but um i got over that and um i just loved how all that modeling was coming out and as i was drawing it more and more and more was coming out and i just i just loved it i could have just put it on my wall just like that so i hope you like it too maybe i'll make a bunch of them just like that a whole bunch of colors make a make a rainbow um alien world to put on my wall <laughs> so the stamps that i'm using for this are um from the set cycle celebration from stampin up i think it was in last the last catalog but i'm not sure if it's in this catalog and the other one is called technologic by K kaiser craft for the gears and then i'm just taking the ranger archival black ink jet black ink to put it on because the Mr. Huey's color mist is water-based and it's going to move with everything that I put on after this and I didn't want the um, crisp images that I'm putting on here to move. Um, the reason that I put a stack of magazines underneath this canvas was that it's hollow underneath and it's really difficult to punch or stamp images when you have a canvas that's hollow underneath. You don't get complete images. And for this, I kind of wanted the crisp, clean, full images of what I was stamping. There you go. It's not much, but I like it. So then my idea was uh, I was going to take some of this Liquitex um, modeling paste and then I was going to take the iridescent medium from Artist Loft that you can find at Michael's and make really shiny paste. But I wanted it to be silver shiny paste so I added this acrylic um, dazzling metallics. Um, paint and it's silver sage so I thought this is going to be really awesome this is going to be super shiny awesome silver whatever I put on top and then I picked out this stencil and the stencil is from folk art and it's called a painting stencil um, and I just I just kept globbing it on and globbing it on and smoothing it out and globbing it on and, and I was really excited at this point of what this was going to look like. I had all these images in my head of, of mostly leaving it as is. I really loved the background at this point. Um, I really loved the idea of the silver leaves. So here I am just gently, carefully spatuling it on. Spatuling. I don't know if that's actually a word, but it is today. Yay. And so I just kept adding more and more leaves until I 
felt content, I guess you could say. And um, yeah, screwed up there. Um, this screw up right here is going to make it so that this project takes me an extra day because I'm going to have to go back to fix where that stencil messed up and it'll have to dry overnight before I can run my my spatula over it. So the leftover stuff that's in the container I'm just going to put it into like a little box that is for food storage and then I'm just going to clean up the edges here and and um, I took that stencil and I laid it in my um, art journal and used it over there so that I didn't waste any of my supplies. And then I'm cleaning up. I'm kind of I'm kind of picky and like really clear, crisp, clean kind of stuff. So so mixed media you'd think would be a real big challenge for me, but even though I like it clean and I'm pretty anal about sorting things, <laughs> I've got a little bit of OCD, I suppose you could say. Um, I, I ended up quite quite happy with with how things ended up in here. So yeah, I just kept I just kept adding in more leaves and more twigs and everything until I was I was pretty much just trying to get that container empty and use up all of the materials that I'd started with and I just had too much stuff so it wasn't going to work out anyways. But so I go and I, I clean it up a little bit. I'm sorry I went off screen here. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, and then I just took little gobs of it on my spatula and I went through and I patched up the stuff that maybe I'd pulled the stencil off too fast or something because I ended up with a whole bunch of the leaves not quite um, as smooth and as nice as they should have been. I could have done one more day with this and, and finished that bottom corner, fixed that bottom corner, but I just decided that it was okay. It would be okay to have something not perfect because I realized I was being quite anal about it. So I got to this point and I was staring at it and staring at it and staring at it and it didn't turn out to be super shiny awesome silver. I was so disappointed and I just stared at it for two days because I had no idea where to go next. So I, I don't know if you saw my video um, about my art cards. Um, they're called Jump Start Cards. And what I did was I went around my office and, and pulled out all the materials and, and media that I had and put it on cards. So I have a, this, this deck of cards. So I finally was like, okay, well, we're going to use them. So I pulled out a couple cards and the couple cards ended up with um, use a stencil. And the other card that I pulled was with distress paint. So I used a stencil with distress paint. And this is the the J Tim Holtz, I don't know what it's called, bubble or something. And um, the color that I'm using is the Tim Holtz Distress Paint and that was milled lavender. And then I thought I would try to use these butterflies. Um, and um, the color I'm using is called Shaded Lilac. And I wasn't really happy with this. Um, I have a real problem with using the, um, the daubers for this, I have to figure something out. I have to keep playing with it because I, I'm never content with what I end up with in, with using these brushes and, and stuff. So here I tried to use my finger because I just wasn't content with what was happening. Um, and what ended up happening was the distress paint ended up going underneath the stencil in every single one of my butterflies. So I just wasn't happy with it. So I was looking at this and I couldn't, I still don't like it. I'm still trying to figure out what to do next. So then I pulled another card and it said outline in thick black marker. So that's what I did is I went through and I outlined in thick black marker. And um, I did, I've done this a lot. I, I really find that when I'm stuck, um, often outlining clears the image up and it allows me to move forward with it. So. I got all kinds of paint on my forearm from this. <laughs> I wasn't quite paying attention as much as I probably should have been, but that's okay. So then I pulled out my gelatos and I thought, I'm going to need some color on this. I just can't, I can't keep staring at it. It's just not doing what I wanted to do. Um, the next card that I pulled was use gelatos. So 
I pulled out my pistachio green gelato and I went to town on these leaves. And the thing about the paste is that it seemed to keep absorbing the color and really just sucking it in. So I had to go over the leaves over and over and over again. And I finally, I haven't used gelatos a lot, so maybe that was part of part of the problem. So learning how much water I was going to need and learning how much of the gelato I was going to need took a little bit of a learning curve because I, I really haven't used it a whole lot. So I just kind of kept going and going and uh, until that I was happy with the amount of color that ended up on each leaf. And I, I developed the process of um, drawing a line with the gelato on each leaf and then putting water on it so that it could dissolve on its own and then going out through after and putting more pigment on. And I'm kind of just using it as a as a watercolor idea. I thought that I might use my pearlescent watercolors but I decided that I wasn't going to actually go there. And then I forgot, keep forgetting how much pigment is in one little line up of this. So that yellow is just a a yellow from a regular um, learning kit, like you get a kit with a bunch of stuff in it, and so it doesn't have a name. And then the blue is, it's called a uh, double scoop, and it's blueberry, so it's both double pigment and double the size. And I've always been looking at everyone else's mixed media birds going, oh, I love that, I love that, how do they do that? So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try, and I ended up loving it. <clears throat> so, just goes to show, if you love something, you should try it. Maybe not everything, but I just love that bird. And every time I looked at that bird, I was like, I like this canvas. This canvas makes me happy. So it was like a just coloring the bird, just with the gelatos, all of a sudden the light switch kind of flicked on and suddenly, um, okay, I can work with this. Okay, I can I can go from here. I've got... I, I know what I'm doing now, you know, but still I didn't, I didn't create a plan from here. I decided I wasn't going to plan because I was so disappointed by the silver paste idea. I wasn't going to plan. I was just going to go with the flow and um, just keep working and make it happen and, and see where we ended up. So the brown gelato that I used, um, by the way, was called chocolate. So I got to the to the point of finishing the leaves and the gelato stuff and I thought okay well the background is just too dark I need something to brighten up this background and white would have been too much too bright too overwhelming so I decided to use the yellow gelato but once again I I'm still in my learning curve here trying to figure out how much pigment is in each line or each swipe of my gelato so um, I'm just using my finger instead of a brush because I didn't want it to to go below and use up, uh, pull any of the stuff, but I still, because it didn't wait with this purple, it's called raspberry and it's a double scoop as well. Because I didn't let the yellow dry first, I ended up with mud there at the bottom, well, at the top of the screen there. And I never, I never get over the mud. The mud still stays. It, I, I can't compensate for it, but I try. So I got too light and then I got too bright and then I got too dark and then I got just a mess. So I ended up covering with gesso just to kind of smooth it a little bit, trying to, to blend it a little bit, trying to make something, um, make it a little bit, you know, lighter and distressed and nice. I don't like that mud. <laughs> I, I was really disappointed about the mud. So I uh, ended up spraying Mr. Huey's spray on top in ocean again and then dabbing off around where I put yellow. And then I decided I was going to try and make a spray out of the iridescent medium. And what ended up happening is I ended up getting the tube from the spray in the plot plugged with the iridescent medium before I even managed to shake it all up and spray it on. So it ends up you know letting a little bit of the spray through and then clogging everything just totally from top to bottom so um in the end i ended up just taking the lid off and flicking the iridescent medium over everything but next time i'll know to leave the tube in when i add the iridescent medium so that uh it's the the tube end of the tube is below where the medium is or find a bigger bottle with a bigger spray. 
and then I just dried it again. Now I need coffee. <laughs> so I'm going to put an, an acrylic matte um, medium on these as a glue. And the problem that I got really frustrated with in doing this is that I sprayed that Mr. Huey's color mist and it's a water base. So when I'm putting on my, my with my paintbrush and trying to smooth everything out and glue everything together nice and, and solid, um, I'm starting to feel very, very frustrated because it's just pulling all the sprayed ink all over my beautiful yellow flowers. So that dark, dark blue is going all over my beautiful, bright yellow flowers. And I'm just getting so frustrated with it. So I ended up doing this where I, I coat both sides of the flower and, and then push it down. And I had to fiddle with them a little bit and seal them and paint them. And it, it was a big hassle, but I was like, I was happy with the effect that I really wanted them on there. If you wanted to know where these flowers came from, um, they're actually wedding confetti. So if you go to Michael's and you go to the wedding aisle, there's all these little, um, they're called, the brand is called Brides and it's gray, like it's got a gray banner on it. If you, so if you go to that section, it's confetti and you can get these flowers in yellow and blue and green and gray and red and purple and pink. Um, I use them for everything. I love them. And I started buying them in all these different colors, um, I think five years ago. And it's, they're expensive, but I've never run out. Um, and I've used them a lot. Like every color that I've used, I've used a lot of them. And I never seem to run out because they're confetti. They last forever right I'm sure they won't last forever but you know what I mean like they they seem to that I don't think I'll have a project where I will run out of them and I always walk through and see okay well do they have new colors and do they have um, a new shape or a new style or anything like that no it's all all the same flowers they are these iridescent different colored kind of things depending on what colors are in the trend in that year they came out with some really dark gray ones and I wasn't very impressed with them, but I, I've ended up using them quite a bit as well. So, so once all these flowers are on, I have to go through and, and, you know, push them on again and push them down again. And then I went through with the brush and brushed them all on. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to have to get over it. This ink is going to smudge and that's my fault. I put it on there. I'm just going to have to get over it. So I decided to go through and try to protect them just a little bit and see where I could get. And some of them I tried to rub off with my fingers. Some of them I tried to rub off with a with a baby wipe, but um, I tried not to stress out too much about it. And then I just took my brush and um, covered the entire thing in a layer of matte medium because I was so frustrated with the colors moving that... Um, I decided I was going to seal it all in so that nothing else was going to move anymore. And so it looks white as it goes on, but it's not. It's going to dry opaque, clear, and uh, it'll make me happy by the time that I'm all done. And it, so it's going to seal everything in. It's going to dry nice and clear. It's going to make it so nothing's going to move anymore, and then I'm going to be happy. So when I got here, I'm still really liking the overall canvas, but I was very disappointed with the mud. And so I was looking at it going, well, it needs something else. I can't just leave it like this. It needs something else. And then I got to thinking, well, maybe it needs a title. Well, maybe it needs journaling. Maybe it needs something. <clears throat> but I was really at a loss for where to go. So once again, I, I pulled a card and it said, pull... Um, a verse from a book of poetry. So I thought, oh, well, I've got books of poetry. So I went to, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll wait and show you the book. <laughs> um, so the card, it said to go to a book of poetry and take a verse of that. So I thought, okay, well, I can do that. So I was thinking about it, trying to figure it all out and and then I got to this bird thinking, well, I don't want this bird to be smooth and I don't want to move the colors, so I'm going to do straight strokes along the straight feathers and I'm going to do dabs along the rest of the bird to create a little bit of depth and a little bit of different texture in the bird because 
this gel medium will dry clear, but it will pull the colors up and create a little bit of bumpiness or textures. And you would see this in things like the leaves and in the pumpkins. Um, and yeah, I think I've just done the leaves and the pumpkins and the leaves on the on my other mixed media projects to, to show you what how to do this. There's also a video on my YouTube channel that's called Leaves, I believe. Um, and that will show you that as that texturing as well. So I'm going to take my heat gun to it. And uh, I did that a lot for this project. I just wanted it dry enough that I could move it and go and let it dry. Because the next step is the book of poetry. So the book of poetry, it's a children's book of poetry from 1974. It's actually like a textbook set. <laughs> I inherited it from my grandmother when she passed away. Um, so what I did is I went through and found a poem called Spring Morning. And the verse that I'm chopping up, I, I printed out on my computer and chopped up. It says, if you were a bird and lived on high, you'd lean on the wind when the wind came by. You'd say to the wind when it took you away, that's where I want to go today. Where am I going? I don't quite know. What does it matter where people go? Down to the wood where the bluebells grow. Anywhere, anywhere, I don't know. And it's by A. A. Milne. And I just, as I was flicking through this book, I got to that poem and I was just like, yep, that's what's going to work. And it's only the last two verses of a an eight, six or eight verse poem. So it's it's not the whole thing, it's just a bit of it, but it fit this canvas and I liked it, so I did it. And what I'm doing here is, after I chopped it out, I decided that the white wasn't going to look very good on this canvas that had no white space. So I distressed the edges with the Espresso um, Stampin' Up ink and a little finger dauber on each one. But... Stampin' Up ink and their ink pads are water-based dye ink. So I'm right back at the beginning of my conundrum of moving all of my water-based inks with other stuff. So in order to make this stay, I take my matte medium and I put some strokes down. And if I were to paint, it would drag the, if I used a paintbrush, it would drag the ink along those little strips of paper and I didn't want that. So I laid them down there and I basically sealed in the ink so I didn't have to worry about it. The ink is not going to move once I have this acrylic sealant, so to speak, on it. And it's just, it's just the matte gel, the matte medium, nothing too fancy. I bought a jug <laughs> at, at Michael's. Good thing too, I've used quite a bit of it. <laughs> Now, make sure when you do this that your little strips are in the right order because I read through and found they were in totally the wrong order and had to rearrange them, but I cut that part out so that I would look like I did everything perfect. Oh, look, magical chocolate delivery there on the right-hand side of the screen. My husband and kids had taken a walk to the convenience store while I was working, so I, I was spoiled with chocolate when they came back but I was too busy. So yeah, once I get the poem on, I've decided, okay, I can deal with the mud. I like it now, but it's not done. So then I took out my Sharpie fine tip marker and I was working with it and it just wasn't it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, so I kept trying to make it do what I wanted it to do, and I was just getting more and more annoyed with it. So then I went to my little pen collection and discovered a pen that everyone told, oh, excuse me, everyone told me to buy and I hadn't used yet. And it's called a Jelly Roll 08, and it's by Sakura. And I love this pen. It's great. Um, and I recently noticed that you can find them at Michael's as well. Uh, Michael's has suddenly 
um, put a whole bunch of the Sekiro markers on their shelves. They've got all the different varieties and I'm really, really, I'm hoping they keep them because I want to put a bunch of the different pen packs on my Christmas list. Yes, I still get a Christmas list. I don't get anything from Santa, but um, <laughs> my mother-in-law might as well be Santa. She, uh, she makes me feel very special even though I'm getting old. <laughs> so I just took this this pen and I went over everything and I absolutely loved it so I just kept going and I kept going and I kept going and I added some stitching to the bird. I don't know why. No idea why. It just happened and I liked it. So no complaints there. And I thought, oh, stitching there. Oh, well, let's stitch on every single leaf. Okay, that worked out well. So let's just keep going. Well, we've got to make the page cohesive. You can't just do one set of leaves. So now you got to do all the leaves. Oh yeah, there's lots of leaves. <laughs> sometimes I don't really think. Sometimes I'm just kind of doing things. I don't really pay attention to what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll be singing a song or sometimes I'll be just talking to my son. Through this project, um, that was one of the nice things is that uh, my son is in kindergarten, so he has the afternoons off. So in the morning, I don't I don't have him around. I can get a whole bunch of other stuff done. And in the afternoon, he comes and he plays his video game beside me and chats me up, and tells me all about what he's doing on his video game while I'm arting. But. So that's what that's where we ended up with this. I'm I'm really happy at this point. I'm I'm loving this canvas. I'm trying to figure out how to um, keep it for myself. <laughs> There's no reason I can't keep it for myself. But um, a lot of what I've, I'm doing nowadays, now that I've hit September, is, is thinking about Christmas. And because things take so long um, to make as Christmas presents, I tend to start in September. So. With this one, I, I had intent started it with the intent of giving it as a Christmas gift to a certain family, and now that it's finished, I am looking at it as well. Maybe it doesn't fit that family so much anymore. Maybe I'll think of giving it to somebody else, but we'll see. So I put the stitching on everything else, and so the every single strip of paper needed it as well. So I did that too. And so while I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, I really hope that this jelly roll is not water-based. I really hope and pray that this jelly roll is not water-based. Please don't be water-based. Because I wanted to, to cover the entire canvas in um, the glossy matte medium. Sorry, the glossy acrylic. So I was just, please, 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 don't, don't be, <laughs> please, 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 don't be based on, on a water base. And it's not. It didn't move. Not at all. It was perfect. And I loved it. And everything was grand at this point. But I, I'm still looking at it, and, I, and there's still something missing. And it has to be something that dramatically contrasts everything. And I was looking at it going, well, I've tried purple, and purple's not working. And I've tried this other purple, and that didn't show up at all. So I tried the, gel the gelato, the purple gelato, and that's turned into mud. And I'm still hooked on this purple. And then I got to looking at my nails going, well, that's a nice purple. Hey, wait a second. I've got almost a matching purple in Liquid Pearls from Ranger. I had just picked them up in the last week and I don't know why I ended up with a purple one. It's not normally something I would have picked up in a a liquid pearl. I've never used them before, so that's what I did. And this is the first time I've ever used the liquid pearls and they definitely have a lot of a lot of mediums have a little bit of a learning curve and you shouldn't put you shouldn't put them on your final project without doing a little bit of, of trial and error. You should test things out a little bit before you just throw them at your project willy-nilly. But it turned out okay. 
And I decided that I like the liquid pearls because they go on like like glitter glue, but they're shiny pearls, like you would buy the pearls at the on the strips. So um, you can make a line of pearls, you can make little dot of pearls, you can make a giant dot of pearls, um, you can make it look like an ice cream cone of pearls, you can pretty much do as you please with these liquid pearls. And so I've decided that I've got a new product that I'm going to probably fall in love with, which my husband will be happy to hear. Sorry, my husband's wallet will be happy to hear. <laughs> so I felt that this these purple pearls were the finishing touches to this canvas. So I let it dry and I took some pictures and that is how it went. All shiny and glossy. So the pictures from the camera show everything right from the bottom to the top and all the different layers and really clear and I ended up loving this canvas and it was a great learning experience and I'm glad that you joined me for this video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.